The first time we heard Intel talking about GPU design in the high performance market, it was this huge monster with up to 8 chiplets per substrate, a large unified cache that they called Rambo Cache, and a configuration with up to 16 chiplets where the HBM memory resides. That was during the Ponte Vecchio presentation at Intel's HPC conference last year in November. After that, there was a moment of silence until we heard about the DG1, a 96 execution unit discrete chip that Intel showed off to make sure we knew they were still around for the mainstream market. This tiny little chip was alright if a little underwhelming, but its use as a tool for developers is good. It means once Intel comes to market with their GPU design, not everything will be broken. So we heard about the data center tech and the low end slash entry tech, but what about what's in between, the enthusiasts and the mid range? What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Don't freak out, this is still your boot sequence news. This is just a different uh, format slash intro since I'm doing all of this in voiceover because I'm currently painting the studio. All right, let's get back into it. All right, so Digital Trends received a slide that is apparently our first look at the generation of Intel Xe GPUs, codenamed Arctic Sound. Let's take a look at it. So this is the slide. As you can see, it is split into reference validation platform and software development vehicles. Just so you know, the DG1 is a software development vehicle, which means this category will likely be out of reach. Moving on to the number of cards column, these are the amounts of variants expected for Arctic Sound. And now for the juicy bits, the tiles. The tiles should be what Intel calls a single chiplet for its GPUs. In both cases, SVD or RVD, we go from 1 to 2 to 4 tiles. The 1 tile would be similar to the DG1, except with its 128 execution units. Remember, the DG1 only has 96 out of the 128 active. That means the 2 tile version would have 256 execution units, and the 4 tiles 512, with each EUs containing about 8 let's call them cores, that would be anywhere from 1024 cores for one tile to 4096 for four tiles. That's pretty insane. What's also insane, although maybe not that surprising from Intel nowadays, is the TDP for four tiles. It would apparently draw up to 500 watts. The two tile version would be less, 300 watts, and a single tile, 75 to 150. Probably 75 watts for the 96 execution unit version and 150 watts for 128. The curious thing is that this four tile GPU would need an input voltage of 48 volts to execute this. At least, Intel seems to know that this is an issue. As you can see here, they noted that it would pose some challenges in yellow or not be supported in red. As for the thermal, which is also marked in red for SDV, it's probably just because it wasn't designed yet. The rest of the chart is a bit of a mystery since the language used doesn't really ring any bells, except for Sawtooth Pass, which is a family of Intel server motherboards. The rest would require some inside knowledge. So it looks like Intel is going hard on all fronts, but with power draw like that, the performance performance better be absolutely insane. Moving on, it looks like the MWC 2020 is going to be a lot more quiet than usual. A lot of companies have decided to bow out of the Mobile World Congress because of coronavirus fears. Notable companies include LG, Sony, Amazon and Nvidia who pulled out completely, and Samsung, ZTE and TCL which are going to scale back its presence. It's understandable since the conference is in two weeks and the number of newly reported infections has just started to slow down. And now for some Apple news. It looks like the company is looking at the red team for better CPUs. They've already been using AMD's Polaris GPUs and Navi is next with the RX 5700 MPX module. <coughs> Overpriced. But now we have evidence of current and future AMD APUs making their way into Apple's lineup. In the Mac OS Catalina code, references to Picasso, Renoir, and Van Gogh have been found. I mean, I don't blame them. Laptops with high-end 8-core Intel CPUs are already throttling like crazy, so why not give Zen 2 a try? Just don't expect prices to be any different. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here, that's on the top left to watch the latest video, and right here, that's on your bottom left to subscribe. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Yeah, I still did it. It doesn't matter.
By the way, painting this room is absolutely awful. I have to fix the walls before I actually start doing anything.